Look with me in Psalm 84. The psalmist says, how lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest for herself where she may have her young, a place near your altar, Lord Almighty, my God and my King. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with blessings. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. Hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. Look on our shield, O God. Look with favor on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. He bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. There's a good word right there. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Let's pray and just invite the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for this time. Thank you for your great love for us. Thank you for your presence with us. I pray we would encounter you through the ministry of your word. If your heart agrees with that, just say amen and amen. I don't know about you, but there are times when I just really need to hear a fresh word from the Lord. I mean, I know that uh, I have the right destination in view. I know that I'm traveling in the right direction, but I, I just need to hear his reassuring voice. It's like when you're on a long road trip and your GPS is guiding you. You know you've, you've programmed the right destination into the GPS. You know you're traveling on the right road in the right direction, but you know you haven't heard from her in a while. And you know there's some interchanges coming up and, and you just want to hear something to let you know that you're still on the right course. When we first launched this Jump In Capital campaign in 2013, I was asking the Lord for a fresh word about this new building. And I stumbled across a Facebook post from one of our college students who knew God could use Facebook. She quoted a couple lines from Psalm 84, and then she wrote these words, His house is my home. You know, I love that. That is so good, because I feel the same way about God's house and God's family. One of David's worship leaders felt the same way, and that's why he wrote Psalm 84. Truthfully, over the last few decades, our theology of the church has slipped a bit. Our, our theology of the local church, the value that we put on the local church has slipped. Our theology of Sunday worship services, even our theology of church buildings has slipped a bit. You know, the New Testament words for church actually mean the family of God and their Sunday gatherings and the buildings in which they meet. So if someone says to you, well, the church isn't a building, you know, you can say, you're wrong Oh, It's true the church isn't only a building, but it is 110% biblical to call the Sunday meetings of God's family and the building in which they meet the church. Church buildings are important. They're not neutral. In fact, they're sacred places because of the atmosphere of heaven that's here, because of what we do here. Way back in 1998, before we designed phase one or phase two, we traveled all over Connecticut and New York and New Jersey visiting churches and meeting with pastors. One of the most profitable days that I have ever spent was with Pastor Manzer Wright, the old pastor from First Assembly in Brookfield, Connecticut. He planted so many good seeds in my heart that day, but I'll never forget when he turned to me and he said, Glenn, 
people need a home for their souls. He said the church sanctuary is the home for their souls. You know, that word from Pastor Manzer is why we decided to make this sanctuary and especially phase two filled with light. It's why we wanted to build something better than just a big dark warehouse. We wanted to build something beautiful, some place that is restful, that any time people can come and just sit in the presence of the Lord. His house is our home. The church is where we come to worship God. David said, I will praise you in the presence of your people. In the midst of the congregation, I will sing. The church is where we bring our offerings to God. It's God's storehouse where we bring our tithe to honor him and to secure his blessing over our finances. The church is where we serve God by serving one another. Jesus said that the acts of service that we do for each other, we do directly for him. The church is where we pray in unique authority. Listen, your personal prayer life, it's important. You need to have your own personal place of prayer, pup tent of prayer like Moses had. But I want to tell you, prayers in the church are uniquely powerful because they are prayed in agreement with other believers because they are prayed in the corporate authority that resides in the body of Christ because they are prayed in a place with an open heaven over it they're prayed in a place with a spiritually clean atmosphere they're prayed in a place where there is angelic assistance the church is where we do life together as a family it's where we fellowship and make friends for life. It's where we grow as followers of Christ. It's where we study the word, discuss it, help each other apply the word to the things confronting us. It's where we get encouraged when we're under the weight of the world. It's where we receive prayer from other believers. His house is our home. I want to tell you, this is no ordinary building. This is no ordinary place. This is no ordinary gathering of people. The church is unlike any other organization on earth. It's unlike any other club. It's unlike any other social community. The church is the unique product of the finished work of the cross of Christ, and it's birthed by the Holy Spirit. There is nothing else on earth like the church of Jesus Christ. Looking at Psalm 84, I see five things that are found in here, in Father's house, that can't be found anywhere else on earth. And I want to share them with you quickly. Five things that can be found in here that can't be found anywhere else on earth. The first thing is beauty. Beauty. The psalmist said, how lovely are your dwelling places. In Father's house, there is a beauty that cannot be found anywhere else on earth, like the beauty of worship. Can I tell you, there is nothing else on earth like the worship of spirit-filled people. I'll never forget the first time I heard the sound as an eight-year-old boy. I said to myself, this must be what heaven sounds like because it is so full of joy. When I was in Indonesia last summer, staying at the Prayer Mountain in Indonesia, I was awakened my first morning there before sunrise by the Muslim call to prayer. Have you ever heard the Muslim call to prayer? It is the most awful sound that I have ever heard. <laughs> Terrible, awful, droning. It's uh, just laying there in the dark. It was hot and dark and, you know, it was just so oppressive. And then the first ray of light came up on the horizon and I heard a trumpet and the worship started on prayer mountain voices singing holy 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 Lord God Almighty early in the morning our songs will rise to you and my heart just opened up there is nothing else on earth like the worship of our great king nothing else on earth sounds like it nothing else on earth brings the same results because spirit filled worship is an otherworldly act Activity. When we worship, we ascend into the heavenly realms. We are actually lifted up into the atmosphere of God's habitation. We actually join, the book of Hebrews says, the chorus of saints and angels. 
And spirit-filled worship produces a beautiful response in your spirit. It produces joy. It produces gratitude. It produces hopefulness. It produces holy anticipation. In Father's house, there's a beauty that can't be found anywhere else like the beauty of his presence. You know, God might choose to manifest his presence anywhere at any time, but there is a dimension of his presence that comes only when his family is joined together. The Bible says that he is enthroned upon the praises of his people. That means that when we gather together for worship, we are lifted up into his very throne room. We are lifted up into the sphere of his authority and his order where whatever he says goes. We're lifted high above demonic powers and principalities. Oppression cannot stay in that atmosphere. Anxiety cannot stay in that atmosphere. Sickness cannot stay in that atmosphere. And his presence produces a beautiful response in your spirit. It produces awe and reverence for God. It produces a deeper love for Christ and for others. I'm going to tell you moments spent in his presence in this sanctuary are the most precious things in all of life to me. I love the nights when there's just kind of no schedule and we can soak in the presence of the Lord and just be in his presence. We have a fire in the night that's coming up in a couple of weeks. We're going to start at 6 on Friday evening and go all through the night till 6 on Saturday morning just being in his presence. I can't wait for that. In Father's house, there's a beauty that can't be found anywhere else on earth, like the beauty of redeemed lives. Pastor Nick has a little saying from Psalm 33, verse 1, praise looks good on you. And it's true. Praise is beautiful on the upright. You know, you're not too bad, but you look a whole lot more beautiful when you're worshiping. There's something beautiful about the countenances of people whose sins have been forgiven. There's something beautiful about people who have been washed in the blood of Jesus and set free. There's something beautiful about the countenance of people who are thankful, people who are humble, people who are in love with Jesus. There's something beautiful that happens when we all come together on a Sunday morning and in spite of our struggles the previous week, in spite of the setbacks, in spite of our slip-ups, in spite of our sins, we begin to worship together and our worship becomes something honoring and pleasing and holy to the Lord. Five things that are found in here that can't be found anywhere else on earth. Number two is security. Security. How lovely are thy dwelling places, O Lord Almighty. Don't forget whose house this is. It belongs to the Lord Almighty. The Hebrew title is Lord Sabaoth. That's the commander of the angelic armies of heaven. Beloved, I want you to know that this is not only a beautiful place, this is a safe place. It is a garrison of angelic warriors. In Father's house, a sense of security is imparted to your spirit. You feel protected. You feel watched over. You are filled with confidence that God has your back and your battle belongs to him. Listen, this is a lot more than just momentary warm fuzzies. This is a lot more than a feel-good moment. It is holy encouragement that comes from the presence of the Holy Spirit and it ministers lasting strength to your innermost being. Amen. Five things found in here that can't be found anywhere else on earth. Number three is satisfaction. How lovely are your dwelling places, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints for your courts. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. In Father's house, the deepest longings of your soul are satisfied. Jesus met a thirsty woman at the well one day. Her life was a revolving door of broken relationships. Now she was in another relationship in which there was no security at all. She was ashamed and she had lots of questions for God. 
Inwardly, she was thirsty. But Jesus said to her, ask me and I will give you living water and you will never be thirsty again. That thirst quenching river of his presence is found right here in Father's house. It's found where God's people are gathered together. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. God is in the midst of her and she shall not be afraid. A while ago I was praying with our campaign team and the Holy Spirit gave me a word for our congregation from Psalm 147 verse 14. I will give you peace within your borders and I will fill you to satisfaction with the finest of flour. And I believe that that's what God wants to do among us. He wants to give us peace in our family and satisfaction and the best of his provision. That's what our pastors and our intercessors and our campaign team are praying over you and your family. Peace in your home. The best of his provision and satisfaction. Five things found in here that can't be found anywhere else on earth. Number four is significance. Significance. Even the sparrow has found a home, a place near your altar, O Lord Almighty, my God and my King. Two radically opposite things are juxtaposed here. A sparrow, the smallest and most vulnerable of all birds, and the mighty captain of the angelic armies of heaven. And yet, this tiny little bird is at home in the presence of the God of the universe. This, this tiny little bird is right at ease in the presence of the great king. In Father's house, significance is imparted to your spirit as you experience the love of a great big God. Vulnerable people feel valued by God in here. Defenseless people feel doted on by God in here. Under-resourced people feel undergirded by God in here. Jesus used sparrows in a comparison too. He said, look at the sparrows. Two of them are worth just a penny. And yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father noticing it. And even the very number of hairs on your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth much more to God than many sparrows. You see, in Father's house, you will be blown away by the sudden awareness that the king of the universe knows your name, that he has your number, that his eyes are fixed on you, that his heart is set upon you. You'll have a new sense of importance that is rooted in the knowledge that you are important to him. Five things found in here that you can't find anywhere else on earth. You doing okay this morning? Get you anything? A little something to drink? You all right? All right. Number five, stability. Stability. The swallow has found a nest for herself, a place where she may have her young. The Hebrew word for swallow means a flitting bird. This particular bird was notorious for being very nervous, very jittery, and never being able to sit still. And unless this bird could find a place to nest, it could not reproduce. But in the presence of the Creator, this little bird is able to rest and to nest. You know, many people are nervous birds too. They flit and flutter through life from one thing to the next. They flit from one romantic relationship to another, from one friendship to another, from one job to another, from one self-improvement kick to another, from one spirituality to another. But in Father's house, you become stable so that you can become fruitful. In his presence, your emotions become stable. Your thinking becomes clear. Your judgment becomes sound. In his presence, your decision-making becomes solid. In Father's house, you receive a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. Jesus said, come to me and you shall find rest for your soul. Five things found in here that can't be found anywhere else on earth, beauty 
and security and satisfaction and significance and stability. And those five things found in here do four things for you out there. You thought I was done, didn't you? You thought I was going to call the worship team, didn't you? You think you're going to get off that easy? Not with me. It's not going to happen. Those five things you find in here do four things for you out there. And I want to tell you about them real quick. First of all, the things you find in here give you strength for the journey out there. Blessed are those whose strength is in you who have the pilgrim's path in their heart. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of blessing. They grow from strength to strength until they appear before you. Beloved, listen to me. What you find in here gives you strength for Monday. It gives you strength for Tuesday. It gives you strength for hump day. It gives you strength for Thursday. It gives you strength for TGI Friday. What you find in Father's house gives you strength to walk through the desert. It gives you strength to walk through sorrowful seasons. The valley of Baca means the valley of weeping. But God gives you strength in here to turn weeping into a blessing. Amen. And here's how you know this strength is supernatural. If all you received was an emotional boost, you'd be running low by the middle of the week. By the end of the week, you'd be running on empty. You'd barely be alive by Sunday morning to get another boost. But this kind of strength keeps getting stronger and stronger inside of you. On Monday, you start out the week an overcomer. On Tuesday, you are more than a conqueror. On Wednesday, you are mighty in the land and doing great exploits. By Thursday, you can run through a troop and leap over a wall. By Friday, the enemy will come at you one way and he's going to run away from you in seven different directions. You don't have to worry about falling into temptation on Friday night. You don't have to worry about compromising, blowing your testimony. You are strong in the Lord and in his mighty strength. And then you come back into God's presence in Father's house. And the next week, you're even stronger. The next week, you're even more secure. You're even more satisfied. You're, you feel even more significant. You're even more stable. Your emotions are steadier. Your thoughts are clearer. Your judgments are, are sounder. Your decisions are, are more solid. And the next week, you're even stronger. And the next week, you're even stronger. Five things that you find in here do four things for you out there. Second, they shield you from Absalom's onslaught out there. Look upon our shield, O God. Look with favor on your anointed one. The Lord God is a sun and shield. He bestows favor and honor. Psalm 84 was written on the occasion when David was running for his life from his own son Absalom. David left Jerusalem and headed for the hills. And what he longed for wasn't his king-size bed. What he longed for was God's house. David is the shield. David is the anointed one. This is a prayer for his protection. The psalmist is saying, God shield our shield. And God did. And what you find in Father's house will shield you from the Absaloms out there too. Beloved, can I tell you that Absaloms are inevitable in life. Someone will make plays behind your back. Someone will kiss up to people and try to make you look bad. Someone will try to usurp you and take what God has apportioned to you. Someone will repay your kindness with a conspiracy. Sometimes it's someone that you love like a son. But in the security and the satisfaction and the significance and stability that you found in Father's house, you will stay confident and compassionate. Absalom, oh, he might do some short-term damage, but we will prevail against him. The Lord God is a blazing shield. He gives strength and glory. Blessed is the man who trusts in thee, Lord Sabaoth. The five things that you find in here give you four things for out there. Third, they supply you with everything you need for success out there. 
The Lord bestows favor and honor, and listen, no good thing will he withhold from those whose walk is upright. Beloved, God is the one who can supply everything you need for success out there. Everything you need for success in friendships. Everything you need for success in love relationships. Everything you need for success in your marriage. Everything you need for success in your parenting, in your career, in your finances, in your business, in your health. Peter said his divine power supplies us with everything we need for life and godliness. Listen to me. Hear this well. What you get in here isn't just for the religious compartment of your life. What you get in here is for all of your life. And Paul told us how that supply comes. He, he says it flows down from the head Jesus to the members of his body, the church. That's why in Colossians 2, Paul says, don't disconnect. Don't disconnect from the body because Jesus makes the supply of everything you need while you're connected to him in the church. The five things found in here give you four things out there. Finally, they spoil you for life out there. Now, worship team, you can come. <laughs> Better is one day in your courts than a thousand out there. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to live sumptuously in the tents of the wicked. Can I tell you very honestly, I cannot imagine life without the beauty of God's house. I cannot imagine life without the beauty of saints gathered for worship. I can't imagine life without the hope of saints gathered for prayer. I can't imagine life without the sustaining power of the ministry of the word. I can't imagine life without the guidance of prophetic ministry. I can't imagine life without the joy of believers fellowshipping together. How lovely are thy dwelling places. My soul longs for the courts of the Lord. I have to tell you the truth. I am wrecked. I am ruined for life. I've been this way since I was eight years old and the Greenwich outpouring, it just made it worse. I love to be where people are worshiping the Lord. I love to be where musicians are prophesying on their instruments and singers are lifting their voices to God. I love to be, be where people are standing with their hearts lifted in worship, with their hands lifted in worship. I love to be where flags are waving. I love to be where dancers are dancing to the Lord. I love to be where there are spontaneous shouts of joy to the Lord. I love it when the quiet ones just can't help themselves. They get full of the Holy Ghost. They got to get their Pentecost on and they just got to let it go and say, great is the Lord. I love it where the spirit of prophecy testifies about Jesus. I live for that. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. His house is our home. It's where we find rest for our souls. And honestly, that's why we need phase two. You know, when we talk about a big new church building, some people have mixed feelings. Some people don't understand why we need such a huge expense. Why can't we just make do and save some money? Some people worry about how a bigger building might affect the dynamics of our congregation. Sometimes people say to me, Pastor Glenn, will our church be the same in phase two? My answer is no. It'll be better. See, our church family has outgrown this home. And when the house is too small for the family, life becomes uncomfortable. When the house is too small for the family, the atmosphere isn't quite as peaceful. Things are stressful enough out there, aren't they? There's enough 
road rage out there, isn't there? We don't need road rage in the church parking lot. We need a little elbow room. When the house is too small for the family, mealtimes aren't quite as enjoyable. It's hard for some people to concentrate, hard for some people to see, hard for some people to hear. I know that the air conditioning sometimes is too cold, but the reason is we do one service right after another. There's no break in between, and so if the room gets too hot, we can't get it cooled down the next time. So, you know, the 830 crowd, they love you, I gotta tell you. When the house is too small for the family, it detracts from unity. We cannot get our whole family in this living room. We can't get our whole family in this driveway. When the house is too small for the family, everyone has to work a little harder to make things run smoothly. I work harder. All our pastors work harder to do four services on a weekend. Our worship team, our tech team, our ushers, our greeters, our children's ministry, everybody works harder. When the house is too small, intimacy is not so easy. And parents can say amen. It's a little counterintuitive, I know, but a bigger building is actually going to make us a closer-knit congregation. Right now, there's just no place to linger and visit with people. There's no place to stand or sit. If you notice that someone looks like they're not doing so well, where would you pull them aside to a corner and say, is everything okay? There's no place to do it. I love that on Easter Sunday when we were in the Performing Arts Center down the street, I love that an hour after the service was over, the lobby was still full of people visiting, enjoying one another, because we had a place to stand. Our poor intercessors, they have been consigned to pray in every nook and cranny of this building. They've had prayer meetings in closets, literally. They've prayed in the boiler room. They've prayed on the playground when the weather is good. They could use a place to pray. We have a vision for growth, and we will grow in phase two. But really, we need phase two right now, just to keep this family well-fed and unified and at peace and efficient and intimate. Phase two is about God's family. His house is our home. Recently, we sat down with one of our friends who grew up right here at harvest time. She spent a lot of years away from home. But last year she came back to us. And I want you to just watch the screen for one moment and listen to what happened when she came home to Father's house. Take a look. My life up to this point has been a series of events that have led to basically my self-destruction. And I was really at a low point in my life where I felt like I was empty spiritually, emotionally, and um, physically. And I needed something. I didn't know what it was at the time. And that thing became Jesus. My name is Ashley Vespi. I'm 28 years old. And I've been coming to Harvest Time for eight months now. Up until the time I came to Harvest Time, um, I had been using drugs. I'd been. Um, pretty much living on self-will and I was very unhappy, I was depressed, I just felt so lifeless. You know, death was an option at one point because I just wasn't happy. And it wasn't until I came to Harvest Time and was involved in Pathways and came every Sunday to church that I realized that God does love me. Because I was using drugs and alcohol to fill a void, I always had this emptiness inside of me and I never really knew. I was always taking outside things to fill the void with either men or material things or drugs and alcohol and no nothing ever filled it. It was never enough. And I was constantly seeking more and more and then when I came to find Christ, it was like that he filled every void I had inside of me. And, it's, and now I finally realize that's what I was looking for the whole time. I was just constantly seeking it. I could never find it. And now I feel like I've found it. My mom, has. she's come here for so many years. And I've always watched her and just admired her faith and her confidence in God. And I, and I didn't understand it at the time. 
But now that I'm becoming a Christian and learning about my faith and about the Word of God, like it's completely opened my eyes to seeing that she, she's how much in love she is in Christ. And she's prayed for me throughout the years, and I don't doubt for a second that it was through her prayers and her faith and her trust in God that it's gotten me through what I've gotten through because it's, uh, I really feel like her prayers are what kept me alive over the years. Coming to church every week, coming and um, learning about the Bible, reading about the Word, it's really filled my life so much with like confidence. I never had self-confidence or self-esteem. I feel like this love inside of me that I've never felt before. And I was always so um, sad and angry and I was blaming everybody around me. But when I found Christ, He's giving me that hope because of what I've been through, other people have reached out to me when um, they're in need or if their daughters or sons have, have um, had a drug problem and I've been able to reach out to them and help them and give them some guidance and that's been the biggest blessing overall because just by helping them it helps me. I just encourage anybody who comes here to jump in because it will change your life and it's changed my life and I'm so grateful that I've gotten another chance at life. God is so good and He works through me every day and I'm just so excited to see what comes next in my life.